Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, light of light, you've come among us. Help us to live by your light, to shine as the lights in your world. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. And again. Hello everyone. It's Christmas again and 2021 is almost over. Who knew that this year the buzzwords would be vaccines, boosters, LFT and PCR tests, track and trace, quarantine, isolate, etc. We've all been touched in some ways or another by COVID. Some have been touched more than others and we remember those who have been ill, fallen on hard times or lost loved ones. Who knew that most of us would become experts in the use of technology with Zoom meetings, WhatsApp to keep in touch and YouTube to listen to our Sunday services. I think I speak for most people when I say that what we miss most is interaction between friends and family. We miss that touch of friendship, a hug or a handshake. We also miss the coming together of our four societies for special services at Easter, Christmas, Harvest etc. And we really do miss that cup of tea and chat after the service. In spite of this, we still have much to be thankful for in this beautiful part of the country where we live. I take this opportunity on behalf of Corey and Church family to wish all our members and friends across the circuit a very happy Christmas and a healthy new year. Hopefully we'll be able to get that cup of tea together soon. Do take care and stay safe. Love came down at Christmas, a love divine. What a wonderful story, a story from our Bibles that so many don't share and what's worse, don't care. A wonderful time that we can feel and want to share. We pray for all our brothers, sisters and families in Balamoney, Port Stewart, and Coleraine. And in a very difficult time in our lives, I pray for unity so that we can continue to show love to those around us. Our family in Port Royce send all our best wishes to you and your friends. And in all our trials through this pandemic, one thing is certain, our Lord is close to us. May God bless you all for 2022. Greetings from the Methodist family here in Port Stewart, to our circuit family in Coleraine, Ballymoney and Port Rush. At this time of the year I enjoy listening to a range of Christmas music, but in particular the songs of Matt Redman, who puts a modern twist on the traditional Christmas carol. In his version of O Little Town of Bethlehem, he refers to the glory of Christmas as being the glory of Christ and the glory of his love. This indeed is a reflection of the more traditional carol, as in Love Came Down at Christmas, Love All Lovely, Love Divine, originally a poem by Christina Rossetti. In the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah, we receive the prophecy that God indeed will give us a sign. Behold the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call him Emmanuel, God with us. In the fullness of time God sent his son, and Jesus fulfilled the words of the prophet. He was fully man, yet fully God. What a gift. As Methodists we acknowledge our legacy of hymns, particularly those of the Wesleys. In these uncertain times we all look for security and safety. In the carol, 
Hark the Herald Angels Sing by Charles Wesley, we find the words, Born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Many of you may have enjoyed the Gettys Christmas concert on TV last Sunday night. Indeed, it was Keith Getty who gave us the hymn, In Christ Alone. The story, of course, doesn't end in the stable, nor indeed with Christmas. The birth of Jesus offers to each of us the fullness of life, eternal life. We in Port Stewart wish each and every one of you across our circuit a very happy Christmas, every blessing in the new year, and God bless you all. Well, hello from Balamalee Methodist Church. Christmas, as you know, is a very important time in our Christian calendar. It's a time when we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. We all know the familiar story of baby Jesus and the events leading up to his birth. However, it is important to remember that Jesus is with us every second of every minute of every day. So I want to share with you a short poem and it goes as follows. When you look for me at Christmas, you won't need a special star. I'm no longer just in Bethlehem. I'm right here where you are. You may not be aware of me amid the celebrations, but you'll have to look beyond the trees and all the decorations. But if you take a moment from your list of things to do, to close your eyes and say a prayer, I'm waiting here for you. You're the one I want to be with. You're the reason that I came. And you'll find me in the stillness where I am whispering your name. So a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from Balamani Methodist Church. And always remember, God is still in control. Thank you. And wish you all a very Merry Christmas as we come together this morning. And as we come, let's think about why we're here today. We come to worship the Lord our God. So let's hear some words from Scripture about those who were involved on that first Christmas morning. Thinking of the, the shepherds who'd been out in the fields, and after the angels had told them about the one to be born, they said, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And then it would have been a couple of days later when my guy, wise men from the east, arrived in Jerusalem and went to the palace of King Herod. And they asked the question, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. Humble shepherds going about their daily lives received the news that a child was to be born and they wanted to go and see. Wise men, probably rich, traveling from far off lands, came to worship the infant that had been born. And all these years later, we gather to worship the infant king. We gather to praise our Lord. And to do that, we sing together. And it is from the hymns and psalms. It's number 110. O come all ye faithful. And we sing all six verses of it. <laughs>
And as you take your seats, we come before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, it is with joy we sing our praises today for the gift of your Son, Jesus, our Savior. He is the embodiment of your love and grace. In him we see life and hope for the world. Fill us today with your Holy Spirit, that we may bow before you and be made alive by your presence. Help us with the shepherds and the wise men of old to bring our adoration and worship to you with joy and gladness. We confess that amid all the joys and celebrations of the seasons, we have sometimes forgotten what Christmas really means, and have left the Lord Jesus Christ out of our thinking and living, and allowed the most important event in history to become dulled with familiarity. Help us to remember that you loved the world so much that you gave your only Son to be the Savior of the world, and help us to capture again a sense of the wonder and discover again the amazing fact that the creator of the world, the one through whom all things was created and are sustained, was born as an infant, humble, helpless, defenseless child. Father, we are amazed at how you moved to bring about our salvation. And we thank you this morning for the gift of Jesus Christ. And as we say thank you for that amazing gift, we thank you for the material blessings that you have poured out upon us. And we would ask, Father, that out of all that you have given us, as we bring our tokens of our self-giving to you, that you take them and multiply them and use them to your honor and glory. For we ask it all. In the name of Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I want to read for you a short passage of Scripture. And it's taken from Matthew's Gospel. It's a very familiar passage that you will know. It's Matthew 1 beginning to read at verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name. Jesus. And we thank the Lord for that reading from his holy word. Amen. Mary, did you know
you very much, Sophie, for singing that piece for us. The question that was recurring in that song was, Mary, did you know? Did you know? Hold that question in your minds, because I want to return to it in a few moments. But before we look at the question and the passage of Scripture, let's think about our own preparations for this Christmas season. Is it a case that just like last year, our preparations have been overshadowed by the coronavirus pandemic? Any of you had your plans for Christmas interrupted due to this pandemic? And I see Carol nodding her head there. It was earlier in the week and same day, one son text to say, I've been sent home from work because some of my colleagues have, pos have tested positive. Then a few hours later, a daughter-in-law text to say that she was uh, being asked to test because some of her colleagues, teachers, because some of the other teachers and the pupils in the school had tested positive. So our plans have been disrupted. The teacher, she's clear. But the other one, he has tested positive, so his household is going to be a bit different this year. And it means that we're not gathering together as a family. Uh, so our plans have been disrupted, and I'm sure a lot of you have had plans disrupted or maybe altered to suit the conditions this year. And perhaps if you have been going about the town or somewhere doing a bit of shopping, have you noticed fewer people out? No? Yeah, there have been fewer people out. Have you heard any of the traders, especially in hospitality, talking about their takings being down and some of them now being forced to close again? Uh, the nightclubs and such like, and only table service in places again. And then there's another question hanging over us, isn't there? What will our executive decide when they meet again on the 30th of December. They're taking a little break over Christmas. I wonder what they're going to tell us. Did you hear uh, on the news this morning that uh, I think it's the, the Archbishop of the Roman Catholic Church in Great Britain has actually called upon the government not to shut the churches again? That's, well, that's over in England. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. But in the midst of it all, you have decided to make the effort to come to this place to join with others to worship and to give thanks for the birth of Jesus Christ all those years ago. Some things are changing, but your desire to be in worship this morning shows your commitment and your desire to give thanks to God for the blessing of that infant. During recent days and conversations, I was confronted with the term crimbo limbo. Are any of you familiar with that term? No? Crimbo limbo? Are any of you familiar with the term or the word crimbo being used to describe Christmas? Yeah, you've got that one. You've heard that before. But crimbo limbo, this was a person I was speaking to who had been affected by a positive test. And this is how they were describing how they felt that uh, they were going to be in limbo. Now, when I first heard him say limbo, I thought, he's not talking about dancing, is he? You know, you know the dance where people try to get below a low bar? And I believe the world record something like a foot high. Now, that definitely wouldn't suit me because... From back to front, I would be more than a foot. So, crimbo limbo, I couldn't have been talking about dancing. But then I was thinking there is a, a theological term where people talk about limbo, and that's a place of waiting. Ah, penny dropped. Crimbo Christmas waiting. He's waiting to see 
what will happen over Christmas. And then later on, as I was thinking about that, I thought, but surely we're all in a position of a crimbo limbo. We're all in a position of waiting at Christmas, and it's nothing to do with the pandemic. Because we're waiting in that period of time between Christ's first coming, his birth, and we're waiting for the second coming, when he will come again. We're in that period of waiting, so we don't know when that will be. And we don't know what steps will have to be taken, or we will have to take, as we wait for his return. We have to exercise our faith, as Mary did. Remember, the angel Gabriel spoke to Mary and told her that she was going to have a child, and she asked the question, how will this be? And when it was all explained to her, she answered by saying, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. She wasn't given a detailed route map of what was going to happen. She was simply going to have to take every day, one day, one step at a time. She was going to have to wait to get those questions answered. Mary, did you know that your son would one day walk on water? No, she didn't. Did you know that he would calm the storm with his hand? No, she didn't. Did you know that he would restore sight to the blind, make the lame to walk? Did you know that he would raise the dead? Did you know that he was to be the savior of the world? And to do that, he would die and rise again. This was even before the child was born. And then can you imagine on that day when he was born, the thoughts running through Mary's head, of what will this child become? What will he do? He came to be Emmanuel, God with us. God in human form. But how would that be displayed? How would he be the savior of the world? Mary had to wait to find out. Mary had to wait and watch as he grew to be the man who died upon a cross for her salvation for yours, for mine. She didn't know what it was at the start. But we know. Because we're about 2,000 years on. We know that Jesus did come. That Jesus did heal the blind. Did restore sight to them. Did make the lame to walk. Raise the dead. Calm the storm. And taught about the kingdom of heaven. And taught that to enter in to that kingdom. That by, by believing in him was the one and only way. That's who you have come to worship this morning. That's whom you have come to give thanks for his birth. And the promise or one of the promises he made was that he would come again, that he would return and take those who believe to be with him in the Father's presence. So we're in that position of the crimbo limbo. We're waiting. We've had the birth and we're waiting for his return. How are you waiting in this season when we celebrate his birth? How are you waiting? Are you waiting in joyful expectation? Are you waiting with anticipation of his return? 
Or are you? And it doesn't really matter. It's only just another day. What will it be like when he returns? Will you be rejoicing then? Will you be ready? Are you waiting in joyful expectation of his second coming? Let's sing. I'm going to ask you to sing. And again, the words are from one of our hymns. It's 104. Good Christians all rejoice and sing. Come before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather here this morning, we come to celebrate the birth of your Son, the one through whom all things were created. Yet his coming was not through powerful people or nations, but through the humble obedience of a young village girl. It was proclaimed by ordinary working men, shepherds, and he was worshipped by people from foreign lands. And today we ask, Lord, that by the guiding of your Holy Spirit, we will receive the insight that we need to find once more where we fit into your plan where we can seek to serve you, not just in the places where it is comfortable, not just in the places where there is security, but where we can work to bring about justice and peace, even if it means taking risks ourselves. Lord Jesus, when you came to us from the womb of Mary, there was pain surrounding your birth. There was turmoil during your growing. You knew what it was to be a refugee. You knew what it was to travel to a place of security and safety. And so we bring to mind at this time those who were in positions of need 
this day. We think of all of those who are in need of a touch upon their lives. We think of those who are facing challenges and change. We think of those who are struggling and trying to understand where they're being led. And we remember all who are in areas of conflict, not just hostility between people, groups, or nations, but conflict even within homes and families. Lord, during your ministry on earth, you associated with the peoples at the margins of society. You ate with tax collectors and sinners. You reached out to people who were in need. Help us to be a people who seek to reach out with your love to those who find themselves on the margins of our society today. those who have been found to be homeless, those who are seeking a place of refuge and shelter, those who are seeking a place of belonging. When we remember your birth, Lord, there was much lacking. There was little by the way of comfort. Your church over the centuries has become rich. Help us, Lord, to be a people who are willing to share the bounty of all that we have with those who are in need. And help us to be a people who are willing to take the good news of your gospel message to all people everywhere, be that in far-off lands or be it with our neighbours. May we be seen to be a people who share your love in word and deed. And Father, as we journey through this day and the rest of this holiday period, we would pray that you will draw each one of us closer to you and help us to look with fresh eyes upon the images of the babe in the manger, knowing that he became our Lord, our Savior, and that one day he will return. Help us to prepare a place in our hearts for that day. These prayers we offer in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And so we sing our closing carol for today. And... It's see him lying on a bed of straw with a drafty stable and an open door.
And so, as we draw our service to a conclusion, let's bless one another as we say together and to each other the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.